I am here with Kimberly today at our Leadership Seminar Philosophy in Practice. Kimberly, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview with us. Absolutely. This uh, whole leadership uh, seminar is about values-based leadership and looking at the world currently with everything going on. We seem to need more good leaders. In your opinion, and you have met many leaders in your time, and also you are a leader, what makes a good leader? Um, I think what makes a good leader is a number of things. Um, first of all, it's stepping forward with your values. And hopefully they're values that align with the constitutional underpinnings of your country. And with those values, those values mean that even when you have hard decisions to make, that you make them. And um, because otherwise what happens is you can be accused of hypocrisy or double standards. You can be accused of not, you can, what it does is it allows your uh, opponents to accuse you of what we call whataboutism. Um, if you're not stepping forward with those values all the time, and, and sometimes it's very difficult, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of courage. And uh, you have shown a lot of courage on a lot of issues. You are a human rights lawyer. Um, you stand in for human rights. And in a sense, you're also an activist on human rights. Um, what made you decide to become a human rights lawyer? So I'm, I'm a lawyer who basically works in the human rights field. Um, I don't actually take cases to court as a human rights lawyer. But I will say that what has driven me and motivated me is um, something that I could probably derive from some of the texts we've read over the past uh, 24 hours. Um, it's this idea of justice, justice and accountability, because, um, you know, we all have rights that are inherent to each of us and they can't be given away and they can't be taken away. This is what we agreed to in the wake of the tragedy and the what arose out of the ashes of World War II. Um, the principles of the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights are really the guideposts um, for how we can move together forward peacefully um, with each other, within states and among states, and the citizens of those states. Um, it's about the protection of innocent lives. And so, For me, um, having grown up, and I believe I was really influenced by the civil rights movement, uh, to see the, the, the inequality um, change to at least systematically change into equality um, in, in my country um, made a huge difference in my thinking about right and wrong in the world and how each person deserves to be treated and deserves to live. And so um, I went, when I met Human Rights Watch 20 years ago, I realized here was an organization that was, um, you know, putting truth to power, putting laws into action, and also making sure holding governments to account that they treat their, their citizens and others according to these guidelines that we all agreed upon. And it needs uh, people like you to remind other people and other countries and regimes that they do need to be held accountable. And can I say also in my own country, I mean, just so to be clear that it's, this isn't an American government organization. This is an independent global organization that happens to be based in the United States, but we work on all countries, um, no matter whether they're strong democracies, please show me some strong democracies, or flawed democracies, or populist run, or autocracies and dictatorships. We work, we work on all of them. Thank you so much uh, for specifying this. Um, 
I know that um, young people are tremendously important to you and that you're investing a lot in young people because they are the foundation of our societies and the future of our societies. What is your most important project you're currently working on which fosters young people? Um, I would say, do you want me to take that? I would say that um, it's my engagement with Bard College Berlin it's a independently accredited college, liberal arts college in Berlin, which is quite different from the German university system. Um, it's affiliated and um, wholly owned by Bard College in New York. And the reason that I find this particular uh, entity, institution, so compelling to me is twofold. One is we bring a liberal arts education into the heart of Europe. And I think liberal arts are incredibly important for young people because I call it human rights for young minds. It gives them um, the academic rigor of criti learning critical thinking in a very safe academic environment um, where they will be confronted by the issues of today and they will look at them through the lens. They will have the opportunity to analyze them and think about them through the lens of literature, history, political science, economics, art, religion, philosophy, um, so that you're, you're able to look at the world in a context that allows you to make wiser decisions. And it allows you to sit in a room with someone from a different country that may not be a country that would be a friendly in your opinion and it allows you to have a conversation with them rather than to become the enemy. And the other thing I will say, the second thing that I think is so important is we have 61 nationalities at the college out of 350 students, 61. And over, let's see, I wanna say, I think it's 14% of our student body are students from countries of crisis and conflict who are there on full scholarship from Ukraine, from Syria, from Afghanistan, from Venezuela, from uh, many other places that they've had to flee. And we give them full scholarships and these are really leaders of the next generation. The, they are so impressive. I, I, every day I kind of pinch myself when I meet them that there are these exciting young minds who would never have this opportunity but for a school like Bard College Berlin. And in your busy schedule, you nonetheless decided to spend a whole weekend uh, from Thursday to Sunday with us going through philosoph philosophical texts and discussing them among peers. What made you come here and spend the time with us? Um, I think that in life it's incredibly important to be a perpetual learner and the opportunity to come to a professionally driven uh, run program moderated by amazing thinkers who uh, know how to help carry us through texts that um, we possibly read, you know, 30 or more years ago, 20 years ago, and um, have moved into some corner of our mental libraries um, to to go back and relook at those texts because that's exactly what I was talking about when I was talking about what Bard College Berlin teaches is this idea of taking these inc wise, challenging texts that help us think about the world and ourselves and what our values are and, you know, how we move through society there's always space as you grow in life and you go down different paths to keep thinking about these issues and helping, having them, allowing them in to help you understand your path and your life more fully and maturely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Um, we are just delighted that you are here, that you're discussing with us. Um, and there's still a little bit to come over the, over the next one and a half days. Thank you very, very much, Kimberly. Thank you, Stormy. Looking forward to Antigone. <laughs> <laughs>